All right. We are now recording. Great. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jody Hammer, and I am the Global Reentry Career Services Specialist with the National Peace Corps Association. And uh, I'm really thrilled to be here tonight to talk with you about the concept of branding, you know, creating your personal brand, and, um, and then how that can help you in marketing your Peace Corps service as well. So um, what I want to do before we get started, a couple things. Um, people started, I think, putting their comments in the chat box. They started putting in where they serve, which is great. You all, this is a great way to connect with other RPCVs and such. Um, when you do have a question, if you can drop that in the chat box, please. That way, Jonathan, who's, you know, I'm going to let introduce himself as well in a moment, will be able to um, help feed those questions to me at the appropriate time. We really want to make sure that the emphasis on this is on Q&A. So while I'm going to be talking some, I definitely want to stop and take some questions and then allow much of the time, the bulk of the time for specific questions that you might have. So in terms of introductions, um, I too am an RPCV, a very proud RPCV, having served in Ecuador from 1994 through 97. And I know it seems like a long time ago, but in many ways it really does feel like yesterday. So um, I have worked in the career development field um, for years, most recently in uh, Peace Corps headquarters. Some of you may recognize my name from Peace Corps headquarters where I ran their career center. So um, did a lot of these types of programming initiatives and working with the RPCVs as they transitioned, whether it was because of evacuation or because of them finishing their service in the, in the standard time. So um, before I go any further, I definitely want to, you know, acknowledge the fact that I'm sure many of you who are watching are evacuees and our hearts have gone out to you and we're really doing everything we can to help in, in whatever way possible because this is obviously a difficult transition. Um, that said, I know RPCVs, I've worked with them for years and years and I know how resilient you are. Um, we are, right, all of us, and I know that, you know, you are going to make this work, whatever choice you're, you're making, and I know it can be hard in terms of decisions and such, but we are here to help you in whatever way. Myself, working with the career area um, of the Global Reentry Program, but I want to let Jonathan introduce himself, and he runs the very important advocacy department and, and can just chat with you very briefly on, on his role. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, first, uh, Hopefully uh, there won't be any interference. I, we have a thunderstorm moving through my area right now. So uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Jonathan Pearson. I'm the advocacy director at NPCA. I served as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Federated States of Micronesia uh, in the late 1980s. And uh, I'm here to assist Jody. And Jody, I don't know if you saw that Dan is online and wanted to offer greetings. Oh, great, wonderful. And, and my, uh, my colleague, my boss in the Global Reentry Program has just joined us and um, I will let him introduce himself and then I'm gonna put it on the uh, pillar screen so that you can introduce that. Thank you, Dan. That sounds great and uh, very happy to be with you here tonight to talk about branding and you see here our uh, global reentry branding. We're trying our best to, to make it stick and, and launch this program and, and get the services out to you, our clients, uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, NPCA, as many of you know, if you've been involved with this, uh, we, we, are, we exist, um, all 10 or 12 of us in, in the office, uh, we're working from our home these days to, to serve you, uh, the return Peace Corps volunteers, uh, whether it be six weeks, uh, or I guess it's coming up on two or three months now since evacuation, or RPCVs that uh, served um, decades ago. Uh, we, we have launched this global reentry program to uh, serve as a bridge from service to service. Um, many RPCVs return to service-oriented service, service -oriented careers and stay involved in their communities. And this program exists to help you uh, exceed, uh, excel, succeed in your, in your careers and, uh, and, and your continued uh, efforts uh, 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 on behalf of your communities. We are super excited to uh, be able to launch this program. Uh, as Jody mentioned, the, the circumstances that allowed us to do it were, were quite unfortunate, but uh, it's a program we had envisioned for a long time. And um, uh, with the evacuation, we're able to, to make it possible for you. 
I was very happy to join the MPCA team uh, a couple of months ago now, and uh, one of our first moves was to bring on uh, Jody Hammer, who we are so fortunate to have. Um, I worked with Jody at Peace Corps headquarters for a number of years, and to see her in action as we responded together to um, uh, other country evacuations when I was in the Africa region um that uh, was was uh, great uh, uh to see her and how she uh empathetically responded to 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 volunteers in need of career urgent career services and i just know that she's been uh committed to to uh, this work for a long time and she's very good at it so i'm not going to talk anymore i'm just going to let her jump right into it and um uh, just to add one more thing uh, before I silence myself uh, and, and uh, for the rest of this call is to please um, share uh, if you feel like you are benefiting, if you're enjoying uh, the, the resources we're offering as part of the Global Reentry Program, please share them with your cohorts, with your fellow RPCVs. Um, we have, I would say, between 250, 500 uh, uh, of you that seem to be finding our webinars uh, 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 repeat offenders. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, we would love to expand that number to the 7,000 plus uh, that were evacuated in, in our community at large. And uh, you can help greatly in, in helping us reach more and more people who would enjoy these services. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jody. Great. All right. And as you can see, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on this slide here, the four pillars, as we, you know, as we define it, um, our program, right, the global reentry. And it's so the career is, is where the career services is where I spend a lot of my time, um, but also some in education and, and education one trying to help connect RPCVs to educational organizations, um, institutions that many of whom are offering, you know, they've opened up their deadline. They, they've, they've like reopened their application for returned Peace Corps volunteers and you know evacuees in particular and are allowing them I think a lot of the closing dates are probably either I think it's either the end of this month or surely by the end of next month so um, and many of them are giving scholarships and such that are you know such that you know you if you can qualify for the program and you get in you would have you know a full scholarship or some you know a good percentage um, things like that so definitely that's the other uh, really pillar and then the well-being of course just really helping with you know tips and resources for you know peer support during such a difficult time right and emotional support and then that the last pillar really continued service which Dan did you know talk he alluded to the continuation of service instead of close of service right you know we think of COS as close of service but we're really trying to get people more into the mindset of <clears throat> it's a continuation of service I can vouch for I mean my my experience was in the 90s and it has greatly impacted what I've done for a job, um, the, the types of volunteer work I've continued to be involved with. Um, it's really shaped me in, in, to a large degree. And that's where it kind of comes into this whole, you know, branding, right? Your, your Peace Corps service really brands you in a sense. And so we're going to talk about that tonight and hopefully, you know, share a lot of information, um, you know, answer questions. And, and honestly, if we have folks on here, you know, sometimes we have folks on here as well who are, um, you know, they're maybe listening in because they're helping other people. You know, if there's people that have like a, a, a corporate, you know, or marketing background, I welcome your insight um, to complement anything that I'm sharing here tonight as well. So let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. Uh, so corporate brands, right? There, there's many corporate brands that are pretty unforgettable, right? I mean, and I just listed two here, right? You know, if I close my eyes and I think of brand and, and corporate branding, I instantly think of the Nike, you know, just do it or Apple, you know, the think differently, which I love their rainbow uh, one here for pride month or for, you know, whenever they've, they've used that as well um, as the just white gray one. So um, those are a couple of the ones that I think of. Does anyone else have one that comes to mind that you want to drop into that chat box? You know, if there is um, another one that, that you can, that you, that comes to mind a short one. I mean, you can jump it, jump, dump it in and I'm going to rely on <coughs> Jonathan to help me look at those because the, um, it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll have it a little bit up here, but uh, Virgin. Yeah. Great. So there's, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them, right? I mean, corporate branding. I mean, this is an entire 
division, right? People who are specialists in branding organizations and coming up with corporate strategy and their, their whole, you know, oh, we're going to change our brand. We're going to go and they launch it and see how it goes. And oftentimes it's launched very expensively in like the Super Bowl, if we ever get to have one of those again, <laughs> um, you know, where the very expensive ads come out and they have their new, you know, sometimes their new uh, brands and such. So that's more on the corporate um, level, but we're going to be talking tonight more of on the personal brand right, level, right? We're going to talk about what is your personal brand or what do you want your personal brand to be, right? Uh, and how can that help you? How can it complement your materials and your applications and all of those, your networking, all of those kinds of things? Um, how can it make it, how can it make you more memorable? So I just have a graphic here that you can see, you know, personal branding, you're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about, you know, how do you stand at your others, you know, you standing out from them, you know, um, this one, what are your like skills that you're really known for? right? Um, it, it really ends up being your reputation largely, right? That's how you, you know, you think through like what, um, what is my brand? And we're going to go through it a little bit more in detail as well. Um, but what you have to offer, right, is what we're, what we're really talking about here. And this one, you know, branding allows you to stand out from the crowd. I mean, that, that's, you know, just, it, that's one of the big things for it. Now, some, like, there's some shorter, you know, your personal brand, when you, when you, when you research or you, you know, look a little more into you, like branding and, you know, what can help you. And I'm going to be sending you some links that are going to be to articles or to, um, that can help you develop your brand. They're going to be um, to uh, sometimes videos. So, so some things to assist you, but um, there's, there's really kind of two, there, there's two kinds of brand, right? There's, you're really short. You're like your corporate one, just do it, Nike, or, you know, the, those types of ones, right? Very short, very crisp. Uh, and these are some examples that I have in here that that I just pulled from, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm linking you the article that, that these were from, but um, I help individuals reassess their life choices and discover their true path to success. That's a career coach or, um, you know, consultant type of thing. That, that might be how they would define themselves, right? And, and it's more concise. I mean, you'll see some longer ones on the next slide. Uh, I really liked this one, translating the geek speak and simplifying the complex. I certainly appreciate that. I am not the technical guru, you know, um, that many of many folks who are graduating from, you know, undergrad, you know, these days and going, maybe those of you who went to Peace Corps straight away after and are coming back, you've grown up with computers and all those things. You're on all of the social media. You're like this expert in it um, many times, but um, so I really appreciate this one, the, the, the translating the geek speak, like, like tell it to me in, you know, the non, <laughs> the non techie language. And then real life, the last one on the bottom there, real life on a budget, that one was by a personal financial consultant, um, which is interesting too, right? I, I like that one, real life on a budget, like, you know, helping people come up with a budget for themselves that they can live on and they can save and you know those kinds of things so um those were a couple of the ones that that stood out to me i don't know if any of you already have a brand um or have had a brand in the past for yourself uh if you have and you're willing to share it please you know type it into that that chat box i'd love to love to see uh, any of those as well as we go on so those are really the shorter ones right but these are some longer ones, right? Um, where these are more um, oftentimes, I think ones that may be used in, you know, some kind of a profile or, you know, when they're, when they're doing their interview, they're going to be talking about themselves in this way when they, when they answer certain questions, you know, that tell me about yourself or, you know, things like that. So uh, you can read, I'm not gonna read the, the first one here or the second, but just, you know, the second one, I, I, I like the second one. I think it's, you know, very, it, it's just on point, you know, multimedia savvy, deadline oriented journalist with blah, blah, blah. And, you know, just, just kind of putting it out there. It's kind of your skill statement, if you will, right? It, uh, it shows what skills you have, what makes you maybe uh, a great choice for, for, you know, some kind of work or appropriate for the line of work that you're, that you're going for. Um, okay. So any, anything come in on, on by chance, anyone have a, uh, branding statement for themselves. It's okay if you don't. I know you're probably here because you want to think about doing that. Um, Adam actually says, I've been framing my experience as traveling with intention through work and meaning. Ooh, I like that, Adam. That's nice. 
Um, I presume from that you have, in addition to your Peace Corps service, maybe you've done other types of exchange or work abroad or things like that. Um, I, I, I like that. that that's, that's very nice. Great. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I don't see any other ones, so I'm just gonna keep going to this one. Another one um, just came in. Uh, uh, Jennifer said, uh, collaborative creator of creative social commentary. Nice. Boy, there's a lot of C's there. Collaborative creator of creative social commentary. Nice, nice. And from Eric. Uh, and before we go to that one, sorry, sorry. Um, one thing, just as the wordsmith, you know, as like editor wordsmith kind of thing on yours, Jennifer, one thing I would maybe change is instead of having the creator of creative, maybe it's creator is designer or some other synonym for, um, for that. Uh, so that you don't have the creator of creative. Just, yeah. But I love it. It's great. Okay, Jonathan, what was the other one? Um, from Eric, affecting positive change, one relationship at a time. Nice. Nice. Now, what, what comes to me from that is, you know, that you're talented in, you know, what you're, what you're putting out there is that your strengths include interpersonal skills, right? And working toward change. So not afraid of, you know, uh, change, but rather embracing it, likely. Um, that's really nice. I like that, Eric. That's nice too. Boy, you guys are good. I think you could teach this course. I think you should take over the role here. What do you think? <laughs> um, and then Matthew says, inspired by travel, fueled by curiosity. Nice. I like that as well. That's great. And see, when you put out <coughs> these kind of brands, when you're, when you're talking with someone and, you know, they're asking about you, um, you know, you can say, you know, I often think of myself or my brand as da 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 da, and and here's why, and and you can kind of more explain that, and I think people are really impressed by that. You've you've done the work, you've you've thought about you know how to brand yourself, which many people don't think of, right? Uh, and these kinds of branding, you know, statements and and what you're putting out there as your skills, those need to appear in your resume in all of your application materials, right? Because you're basically saying that you are either an expert in this or you're, you know, you are very good in this. That's what sets you apart. So you wanna make sure that any kind of application materials you put in will, um, will show that as well. So point those things out under your, you know, jobs and use some of those, you know, types of words and things, okay? Awesome. Uh, if there aren't any more questions, we'll, we'll go ahead. I wanna talk a little bit. So, so, so these are, what, what I wanna leave you with, with the, personal brand statements and the kind of longer and the shorter version, you know, um, we're going to talk a little more about using those, if you will, in different contexts as well. But as I said, I will be sharing some information with you and other samples and how to create them so you can come up with your own, but you're doing a great job already. I'm, I'm most impressed by uh, the ones shared in the, in the chat box. These are, these are really good. And I hope that they get the rest of you thinking um, about where you might go with that. So what I want to move on and talk a little bit about is the elevator pitch. Um, ha who knows why we call it the elevator pitch? Anyone? I don't see any answers coming in. Um, that's fine. Originally, yeah, the time it takes to ride an elevator, you know, up, whatever. Now, of course, it depends on how high your building is and all of that. But you're usually talking about a, a short statement, like, you know, 15 to 30 seconds, you know, pretty, pretty short and sweet. And this is a, an area, the elevator pitch is a, an area where you really can incorporate your branding in because that branding statement, those branding statements that you shared with me, Matthew and, and um, you know, some of the others that, that shared their, their statements, if you were to be able to say that, in a, that right there told me a lot more than those words you shared. It told me a lot more about your skills and your background, right? So you can even incorporate, you know, I, in branding myself, I see myself as, to, you know, and, and sharing that really, really helps, I think, um, very, very efficiently get across what you, what you maybe want to say. So it's, it's a way, um, but, you know, and what I say, but we, we talk about elevator pitch, it's not just in elevators, right? I mean, the name came from how long it would take, but it clearly is outside of elevators more than inside, right? And uh, it's when you run into, maybe you uh, attend a networking event once we're able to get out and, and get back to, you know, real life ones that aren't, you know, just the virtual. 
you're standing in front of, you know, you're, you're standing in front of the elevator, you're standing outside the room where, where it took place. And the, the keynote speaker, who's somebody that is an industry professional, maybe that you've been following in terms of, you know, there's somebody that's really inspirational and well-regarded in the field and, you know, whatever, right? They happen to come out and you'll, you happen to be standing right there. And it's that perfect opportunity for your elevator pitch, right? And, you know, in those cases, I obviously recommend, you know, first, thank them. Thank you so much for being here tonight and, and chatting about your experience and whatever. I've been following you for years. Your work is so inspirational. I myself have just returned from Peace Corps and am, you know, was working in marketing, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm looking now to translate that into da, 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 da. You know, it's, and, and, and they might jump at the Peace Corps thing. Oh, wow, you were in Peace Corps. So was I, or where did you serve? Or, you know, so it, it definitely can launch into more of a conversation, but it's just that connection, you know, developing that connection in the elevator pitch when it's a thank you, thanking them up front, um, and then, you know, going from there. And, and you might, you know, in that say, you know, gosh, one of the things that I'm really looking to do is, is chat a little more with professionals, you know, in the field to hear, you know, from their wealth of experience, wondering if you might have 15, 20 minutes of your time at your convenience to chat a little bit about your, more about your whatever background, blah, blah, blah. And they might be willing to do that, right? On the other hand, maybe it's just a more brief and, you know, I'd love to connect with you on, on LinkedIn or, you know, and then you can do the ask later um, for that, you know, informational interview or as I like to call it, career chat. I think it's a lot less um, cumbersome saying, you know, 15, 20 minutes of your time for a career chat to hear a little more about your own experience and tips and advice you might have is much less cumbersome than I'd like to do an informational interview. It just doesn't roll off your tongue, right? So um, that's a couple of things um, that I wanna say on that. But as well, I wanna say um, this is also your elevator pitch is you know used oftentimes in your, when you have your uh, interview and they ask you, what's the number, what's the question that they almost always ask first straight away, the most common question in interviewing or one of, what is it? Let's see, come on somebody in the chat box here. Uh, what do you do or a variation of, tell, yes, tell me about yourself or tell me about your experience or tell me about your background and why you're interested in this position. It could be a two part, right? Um, this is where you can include your brand as well, right? Really spotlighting and it may or may not be actually sharing the scripted, like, you know, what your brand that you came up with your statement is. It may be much more and oftentimes it is much more this, it's including the information that went into, you know, creating that. Like, what are your skills? That's what you're gonna be really emphasizing in yours, right? What's your passion? What keeps you up at night or what, you know, what gets you up in the morning? You know, what, what is the kind of work that you would love to do, even if you're not getting paid for it? You know, those kinds of things like, to, you know, figuring out what your passion area is and, and where you want to make your mark. And then when you do have the interview, whether it's an informational interview or an actual job interview, you're able to convey that and, um, and obviously target it and tailor it toward the job duties that, for the job that you're going for, right? You wanna make sure that you include those kinds of things and, and um, are, are talking about that. So it's really clear to them, wow, they'd be a great fit. We should, you know, we should move forward or take them to the next step, that kind of thing, okay? So let's go ahead here. Um, a, I'm just kind of looking at the chat box to see if there's any questions that are coming in, please. You know, as I said, you know, put, put them, put them in any time. Um, embrace networking. Some of you will recognize this, um, this graphic. I just, I really like it um, in terms of, you know, talking about networking. And I did an entire session on networking and I would encourage you to go back and you can listen to it. It's on our uh, global re-entry uh, on the playlist of the NPCA's uh, YouTube channel. And it's also, there's links to it on, um, on our, uh, our global re-entry program uh, description on our website. So um, you can easily get to that as well. Uh, but really, oops, and I hope you don't hear the background. It's really thundering here, something fierce, and I hope that's not coming through. But, uh, but uh, we'll just venture forward and, and hope that it doesn't uh, cut us off. So um, when, you, when you are networking, right, you, you connect with other people, you know, via LinkedIn. We're going to talk about LinkedIn a little bit um, in a few minutes. But um, via, you know, in person, you know, tap into your, you know, your existing networks, right? You know, your networks like your, you know, your friends and your, you know, whether it's a spirituality group or some kind of, you know, alumni group, you know, those are great ones to connect with lots of people from different areas. So 
connect with, you know, people from, from all over, right. And really, um, really get insight and, and, you know, connect with them. And it's just, it's all about kind of, it's building your alliance or your web of resources, right? It's not schmoozing, which, you know, I talked a lot about that in the, the other session. It's, you know, if it's done correctly, it's not, right? It's just being open and, and helping others as well. And, you know, and just helping each other, you know, learn about different areas and things like that. So um, one thing that I do wanna say about networking is once we get back to the in-person, I definitely recommend that if at all possible, you get business cards. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't have a job. That's why I don't have a business card. Uh, well, that's why you actually need one even more so, I would say. Uh, they don't have to be like where you, you know, are working. It's your name is the biggest thing on the right. Your, um, it might have your branding statement if it's a short one, who knows, but it could have that on there. I've seen people who've done that, right? Their little phrase, their little, you know, branding statement, um, but others won't have it yet. You know, probably have like a title for yourself, not, not a job title per se, but, you know, what's your, you know, what's your field? So it could be, you know, international relations, you know, what, bilingual international relations. If you're bilingual, great to put that, right? Um, and then your, obviously your, your uh, contact information, not your address you don't need, but just your, because that's gonna, that's gonna change, right? More, but your phone number usually doesn't change much, right? And your email. So having those, your contact information so that people can get a hold of you, right? Trust me, when you are doing networking, and you're in person, it's, it's great for a lot of reasons. When you have a business card in the end, you know, or you're talking and you get out a business card and hand it to them, it's kind of this unwritten rule that they should be returning the favor if they have one, right? So it's that like jogs there, you know, them to do that. If they don't, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have one. And you're like, no problem. I'll just write you, I can write your contact, you know, could I write your contact information maybe on the back of yours or, you know, something. If you do that, cross out the front so that you don't use it with somebody else and, and give up that contact because um, I've heard that happening in the past as well. So um, that, so I do think that the business cards can be, you might put your master's if it's a, if, like, if you're looking in public health and you have an MPH, you know, it might be good to put that, right? Some people will put their LinkedIn profile. Like, that's really smart. Um, I was just reading uh, a stat that was so high. It seemed so high, but it was like 82% of employers will look at a LinkedIn, you know, like, like look at a LinkedIn profile, right? For their, like the candidate that they want to go with, you know, to check it out, to just, you know, see whatever. And, and that seems high to me, uh, but it seems all the more reason why I think it's really important that we do have LinkedIn profiles. And I know there are people I've, I've worked with them in the past too, who are like, you know what, I really want to keep my, you know, technical, um, you know, footprint lower. I don't want to deal with having to change, you know, look at something else and monitor it and whatever. But LinkedIn is such a huge one. There's like 600 million uh, users. It's huge all around the world. And so it's one of the easiest and best ways to network and connect with a lot of different people. Um, so I, I would encourage you to, to really, you know, do that and spend some time on your, um, on your profile, right? Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit from the branding perspective in a moment um, after this. So uh, we've, we've talked about, I think this one, if there's not any questions on networking, are there any on networking and branding um, questions that you have as a reminder, throw those in the chat box and uh, Jonathan will either let me know if I miss it or I might see it on my own as well. Uh, so just put those in there anytime, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and look at, let's talk about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, it really is, I mean, it is your platform for your personal brands. It, it is exactly, it's exactly what it's really created for, if you will, right? You don't want to have your LinkedIn be just another version of exactly what your resume is and, you know, and such, because you can actually be more creative and you can use full sentences. So, you know, you can show how you write actually, which is kind of good, but you don't want long paragraphs. I like very short, you know, crisp uh, paragraphs. If you're, you know, not using bullets, you can certainly still use bullets, but, um, but, uh, and, and I, I like that as well. So with LinkedIn, you know, in the header, your header, right? You know, you have your, your photo, which, and I do want to say, just to remind folks, use a professional photo. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have had it taken by a professional who's going to charge you a lot of money, but a professional looking photo where you are dressed nicely. It's a headshot with maybe, you know, a little bit, you know, 
I mean, you can have a little bit of your, um, you know, your outfit and such showing so it wants to be, you want it to be a really nice outfit. Uh, you can, I mean, you can get a nice shot, honestly, on, you know, on a cell phone these days because cell phones are so good. You know, their cameras are so much better than they used to be. You can get a fine shot on that. Have somebody, try not to take the selfie yourself because that is kind of more obvious. Have somebody else take it and take several. And then, you know, and you want the background, you know, you don't want it to be anything that's really distracting. So either, you know, a plain background, you know, a lot of people will do it in front of, you know, just a colored wall or, you know, um, something, you know, I, now I have heard of people who've done something where they're in action, um, where they have that as their picture, but the key is having it show you close up so they can see you and they, they're like, oh, this is Jody, you know, instead of if you had a picture, if I had a picture of me training and I, my back's to the camera and they have a picture of that, that's not really going to be, that, that's not going to be appropriate for my profile pic. Now, maybe I put that down in some of my pictures because you can really use LinkedIn and we didn't talk about this as much in the LinkedIn um, session that we did, but LinkedIn, you can really use the, um, for your, to tell your story you know, you can include, you know, uh, video clips. I know my former colleague, you know, had, and it was a great idea. He had the um, taped uh, video of Kennedy saying, talking about Peace Corps and the vision of Peace Corps, whatever. He had that clip. And it was really powerful, right? Because then it, it tells them exactly what, you know, Peace Corps is. Now, many people do know Peace Corps, right? But having that there for somebody who might not, or just hearing, it was inspirational, you know, hearing that. Or other people will link to maybe a training that they gave, you know, the, a, a picture or the curriculum or things like that. You could put some of your professional materials in, you know, in LinkedIn, which is nice because others are then able to look at it and see you as that professional that you are, okay? Okay. Uh, so, so one, uh, one thing I do want to say too, with the, you know, using the header and the summary to, to kind of put your, um, to steer people in the direction that you want to go. The, the one time that this is hard is if there's multiple directions that you're pursuing at once, right? And they're very different. Um, in that case, it's a little harder. You've got to really look at some of those transferable skills that would be applicable to either um, industry and really maybe, you know, plug those a lot. Um, but you know, the, and, and, and of course, you know, be willing to, to change it as your, you know, you may not like, you may think you want to do something and you go in that direction, you work in it for a couple of years and you're like, I actually have no desire to stay in this. I want to be in, and you, you have another field. You just need to be willing to re, you know, start again to really think about branding yourself as you want to be seen as reflects your current passions because passions change right? In life, your, your, what you want to do oftentimes change. You still have people who end up doing one thing for 20, 30 years, but it's not like, you know, the quote unquote old days where our parents or grandparents um, did one job for, you know, 40 years. Uh, you, you, you generally have many multiple careers in your life. You know, I think, and this stat is, is old. Um, I, I remember the last time I probably quoted it was um, years ago and it was like five to seven different, you know, careers in your life. So not just, which is kind of exciting in a way, I think, because it allows you to experience more and not to be so concerned about, well, I have to know exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, um, it allows you to pivot. You know, if you like it, great. If you don't, pivot and go somewhere else. So I think it's actually a good thing that we have more um, variety. Now, uh, join groups in LinkedIn is one of the things that I recommend, um, and especially with branding. You know, joining the groups, um, it, it's great for many reasons. One of the reasons, from a networking standpoint, when you're in that group and there's another person in that same group, you can correspond with them or something, even if you're not um, members or there's something like that. Groups give you that because you have that shared group presence. Um, so that can expand the number of people who come out, you know, on your, on your, you know, uh, results when you do your, you know, people searches and things like that. But it's also good, obviously, to join the, the groups that are, that you're passionate about, that are in the industry that you're interested in, because you can keep up to speed. People are always sharing articles and things like that, right? And likewise, you want to share uh, content. So in your groups, and, and that, the reason you want to do that is because it's a way for you to stand apart, to, you know, you know, start a dialogue. You might even tag a couple people that you know will maybe comment on it who are, you know, in that field as well, so that then it gets bigger because they're, you know, the other people see it. And, and so that can be, I think, a really um, 
a really good uh, suggestion and people just get to know your name some and then you become this more, you know, your brand is a little more solid, if you will, right? Uh, endorse people, uh, your former colleagues or, you know, friends that you, you know, really believe in and you know that they have XYZ skills, you can endorse them and oftentimes by endorsing them, there's kind of like this, I mean, they want to endorse you then, you know, it's like, oh, thanks, that was sweet and then they take a moment to do it for you. And the great thing uh, about that is then it builds your recommendations that are on there, you know, from people where it says, you know, you know, Susan is a wonderful, you know, trainer who's worked in blah, blah, whatever. Like there's, there's those kinds of um, references, which are really powerful to somebody who's looking to bring someone on, you know, in hiring bringing someone on is very expensive, right? Extremely expensive to bring somebody, somebody new on. So you want to make sure it's the good, right fit. So when they can look at multiple sources, in addition to the references provided by the, the candidate, when they can, you know, look to LinkedIn and see some of those references and the skill sets that they're, you know, known for, um, that's great. That just makes your reputation all the stronger. Okay. Uh, in, include the skills, um, you know, where they have the skills, you can check off skills that you have, and then people can also rate you as for those. Definitely check those off. And some people are like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, like say that I have all this. No, if it's a skill that you have and you, you know, you feel good about it, put it on there. Because that's the other thing. Employers, a lot of times look at what are those skills that, you know, you're endure, you know, that you say you have, and it's, it's just, it's you in a nutshell. So uh, that can be really helpful. Of course, anyone could put all of the skills and I wouldn't recommend that you do that, but choose the ones that you are really good at, that you stand out for and, it, and see if it doesn't make a, a difference. And then lastly, um, you know, the, the endorsements, like I said, you know, endorsing, you know, people, but like asking for recommend the actual recommendations, you know, um, on there, you can certainly ask for those. I know people feel weird about doing that, but how I would phrase that when you're going out to somebody, it, it would be like, I would probably have it be a former, you know, um, former boss, supervisor, who can speak to your quality of work. And just to say, you know, one of the things that I'm, you know, really doing is, is, you know, um, finalizing my LinkedIn, you know, platform and kind of redoing it. And as, as such, you know, I'm wondering if you might be willing to, as my former supervisor, share a short recommendation, you know, uh, just, just a short assessment of my skills and, and such, you know, and then they can do it however they'd like and, and submit it. So, okay. Any questions on LinkedIn and using that in your branding? And let's see here. I do have the chat box open. Let's see if I can see if there's anything else coming in. Jonathan, is there anything else on LinkedIn or going back to the one before? Um, not at this time. Okay. No problem. That's great. Well, that's awesome. We'll have more time in the end for questions if you have them. So. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, marketing your Peace Corps service in your branding, right? So um, Peace Corps is, as I said, a very formative experience, I think, regardless of what your um, assigned, uh, you know, uh, program was, regardless of whether you were an English teacher or a health volunteer or small business or whatever, right? Water sanitation, you know, there's, there's so many different programs, right? And they're, I think, Equally, I mean, it, the experience of doing Peace Corps itself is very impressive, right? Now, a lot of my clients in the past and, and a, a good percentage of programs with Peace Corps, I don't know the exact percentage anymore, but um, our education, right? Whether it's, you know, education, teaching English, teaching science, teaching whatever, there's a lot of education ones. So a lot of folks um, that I've worked with in the past have come back and they're like, okay, I just spent two years with Peace Corps. And while I love my experience, it was a great opportunity, you know, yada, yada. Um, I'm not looking to teach. And so I feel like I don't have these strong, you know, the strong credentials to, you know, pivot to something else. I feel like I'm just going to be typecast as teacher. And that is absolutely not true. And that is very much up to you and how you spin your experience, right? Because the truth of the matter is, almost all Peace Corps volunteers um, do secondary projects, right? You have your primary project, and then you have your secondary one, right? So uh, your, your secondary project may be the project that is more relevant or related to what your, you know, or quantifiable, your impact, or who knows. So you may be pulling some of your examples and things, right? Uh, from that. And that's absolutely fine. If you don't have to say, well, it was my side project. No, it was part of your Peace Corps service. 
So, you know, your Peace Corps service is, includes everything. It includes your primary project, your secondary projects, the time that you were at home at night running a, you know, I, I, I did a, a play group for young children, helping them to kind of work together and accept each other because there was some division in, in my site. And so um, I had a play group most nights of the week and that was my passion. And so I did that. Well, that's just as important as my, you know, rural health type of work that I did, right? Or more important even, right? In terms of, you know, affecting change and helping, you know, populations, you know, in need. And, and so I'm, I'm very proud of that. And I always made a point of really talking about that as well. And you don't have to say it was my secondary project. You know, you don't even need to say that necessarily. You could say part of my Peace Corps service included and then go right into whatever it was, right? Let's talk about that. But the other thing is remember the transferable skills, whether you're teaching English or your, um, you know, public health or whatever it is, right? You are, what are some of the skills? Let's, let's put them in, put them in the uh, chat box. What are some of the transferable skills that you developed in your Peace Corps service? Let's see what comes in. I know you're not asleep, right? <laughs> this is the quietest group I think I've, I've ever had on these. I'm usually we're trying to fish through the, the uh, chat box and get to all the questions uh, in time, but that's just fine. Adaptability, Adam, great one. Absolutely. As Peace Corps volunteers, you prove your ability to be adaptable. I mean, and hello, for those of you who evacuated at a moment's notice, even more so, right? I mean, you have a story and, and a compelling story. And, and that's one of the things that I've talked about in, in different um, sessions as well is use your story. And, I, and I, I, what I mean is, you know, your story is compelling. Those of you who were evacuated, it's very compelling. Many, many people, when they hear that, I had so many people, friends and acquaintances and whatever, reach out to me and say, I heard the sad news about Peace Corps evacuating. How awful for those volunteers. Like people really felt it in their heart, right? So there's no reason why you should not claim, you know, say it. Like, you know, it was really, it was a really tough experience uh, evacuating after X period of time and, and not being able to say goodbye. Um, and, you know, I proved my ability to my resilience and have, you know, I'm back here. I hope to go back or whatever, whatever your case is, you know, your situation. You know, maybe some other day I'll go back. And at this point, I'm really, you know, moving forward and with my passion and my skills that I've developed in my Peace Corps service, including blah, blah, blah. And, and so you can really, you know, use it like that as well. Okay. Uh, anything, self-starter? Yeah, self-starter skills, Alistair, very important, right? There's nobody over you every morning saying, okay, it's eight o'clock, it's 10 o'clock, whatever, you're late. You know, it's, it's you doing, doing it yourself or not doing it. So yeah, and there's lessons gained either way, right? So resiliency, yeah, someone said too. Verbal communication, yes, the foreign language, huge, whatever that language is, right? Um, and many of the languages, you know, this is another point that sometimes, you know, volunteers say, yeah, but mine's not Spanish, you know, or they feel like, well, it's not Spanish, so it's not really going to help me. Honestly, sometimes the languages that are most what you might think or you might think that others would think is obscure, obscure people want to hear, like, wait, can you just say something in that? I've, I've never heard of that language or, you know, it, it, could, it could work in your favor that way as well. And if you can learn that language, that's a heck of a lot harder than Spanish. Nothing against my fellow folks who, who you know, uh, served in a Spanish speaking country. Um, but learning, you know, some of those other languages are so much harder, right? And so that's something to be really proud of as well. And you can, you can spin that into the, you know, I'm very proud of my ability to, in my proven ability to learn, you know, language quickly as evidenced in Peace Corps. When I learned within a three month period of time, I went from X to Y, whatever. I know myself personally, I thought I was going to Africa. I was a French major in college and then um, ended up somehow, it, it ended up being uh, a Spanish speaking country. And that was fine, um, but I learned more Spanish in three months than I learned in my entire like undergraduate program and my high school program because it was the the your um, it was the immersion right. It, I went home and and talked to my you know host family every night you know and was you know cómo se dice este cómo se dice to learn it right and so I learned a lot more than than I learned in my you know not so great program in undergrad. So awesome. All right. A couple of others so, came in. Um, agility, critical oh, thinking, intercultural. Yep. Absolutely. All of those intercultural, those are skills that are going to be helpful in any job, right? So that's why we call them the transferable, you know? 
Uh, that's great. Analysis. Yeah, your your M and E. You know, you're monitoring and evaluating. You know, it, how many of you did the PACA uh, pro? You know, the PACA where you do the study, um, and then you have the gosh, where you come out with you know you you, you come out with the percentages and all that. That's a form of monitoring and evaluation. And M and E is the big term in inner you know international uh, development, right? So you have some experience in that. So don't forget as well. Yes, it's different than, you know, than having a major in it, but you've had experience and you've proved your ability to learn quickly. So I'll point those things out. Collaborative, great, good one, Andrew as well. Um, needs analysis, nice, nice. Budgeting evaluation, excellent. So great. So um, the other things on marketing your, your Peace Corps service, uh, I think when you're uh, with your brand and such, right, and your Peace Corps, you know, there are going to be some people, most people I think have a pretty positive impression of Peace Corps, right? Um, now, some may have had an experience, you know, with where they maybe had interacted with one volunteer, you know, 15 years ago, and that volunteer was more of the, you know, cuerpo de paseo, they were, you know, not really out doing stuff, um, but, uh, but sitting in their hammock or whatever, just, you know, every day, all day. So they might have misperceptions, but I think far, far and wide, people have a pretty favorable uh, impression. And, and Jonathan, back me up if I'm, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I think you probably see that in the, on, on the Hill when you, when you do advocacy and, you know, people respect Peace Corps volunteers uh, in general because you're, you're going off to live in a foreign country with very little amenities oftentimes, um, you know, and all of that, you know, and, and making, you know, making a place for yourself. So it's, it's an impressive experience, I think, in general. So um, what other, you know, really that's, sorry, the, the, um, that is, takes me to the Q&A. So um, I want to know what other questions you have. We're doing well on timing. We're at 8.50, Jonathan. We, we are doing very well on our, our timing this time. Uh, so yep. if you have some questions, please put them in the, in the chat box. I'm happy to, you know, address them. And uh, let's see what's coming in. There is, there is a question you might be seeing there, discussion about the, the phrase PACA. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if it, the first part is, is PACA an acronym people would know on a resume? Yes. Oh, oh, is it an acronym they would know? Uh, I wouldn't count on it, I, I, but I generally am pretty conservative with that because you never know who's going to be looking at your materials. I would put, the, I would spell it out once and then in parentheses PACA, and then you can refer to PACA when you're talking about it later in your application materials and such, or, you know, in your interview, but you, you, I would say to, you know, to describe it once. Let's see. Um, and uh, yeah, Jennifer and you were responding to that saying, uh, listing PACA as participatory analysis for community action. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I was forgetting what the, uh, what the actual, what the actual um, acronym, I guess, was in the, and what it, what it stood for. So uh, let's see here. Others. Any others? Abby is asking, could you elaborate a bit more on tips for building a brand when looking at multiple potential fields at the same time? Do I come up with multiple or try to just be more generic with only transferable skills? Yeah, good question, Abby. What, what I would say is when I was talking earlier about, you know, try to, you know, look at the similarities between them, that was more when you're developing your brand online, like with LinkedIn, where both of those parties are going to be looking at it, right? Um, you'd, wanna, you'd want to have a fine mix of, you know, the technical skills in, in each of them and the, the transferable ones. But where I would really personalize it is when you get to, when you're doing your application materials for one job, you're going to want it solely, I mean, really tailor it to, and this is something we talk about in general, right? You tailor it to the job description and, and what they're looking for, but you're going to really want to show those, those uh, skills that are, um, that are applicable to that one. Don't worry about the other one then because you're in this, you know what I mean? You have like A and B and it, it takes probably a little bit more um, time to kind of, you know, think through and keep those separate, but you're going to be using, and then when you apply for the next job, use the resume and the application material that was 
uh, used for the closest job that you applied for in the past. So, so whatever job was most similar, and then again, tailor it specifically to the job at hand. And sometimes doing those wordles, you know, or wordle is one of them, uh, you know, a word, um, I am, I am blanking here. It's the word, you know, if you go to wordle.com, W-O-R-D-L-E.com, it will um, generate a cloud, um, you know, of, of with the with the different uh, you'll you'll put in like the job description, all the text, right? You'll just copy the link, put it in, and then it generates. What it generates is you know the different sizes. You've seen them for you know they've had you know word clouds basically, where it has you know the big words and then some small words and medium sized words, right? All kind of jumbled together, and the bigger the word, the more it's repeated in the whatever document, whatever text you're sharing. So it's an easy way to identify what the the main, uh, you know, words and, and, you know, skills that they're looking for are. And so you're going to want to make sure in your applications to really focus on that and, and tailor it extremely well there. But for your shared media presence, that's where I was talking about, you know, putting in, like, think about the, if there is a, like a definitely a technical skill that is required for any of the jobs in this whatever field and something in the other you might try to have both of those in your linkedin profile at least so that you can you know meet both of those but yeah so okay. a few more things could come in one a new tagline just developed when you need your business projects to be hassle free i can help changes happen like ABC. Nice. That's even a rhyming one. I love it. Who was that? That was you. Uh, H U G H. Oh, Hugh. Yeah. Nice. Hugh. Hugh, I like it. You've been on some of my other ones. That's great. Uh, Matthew writes on your resume how many lines of information would be appropriate for portraying your Peace Corps service? What would be considered too much information? I think that depends on um, your other experience and how much other, you know, related experience or whatever that you might have. It depends on how long ago it was. I mean, truth be told, and I hate to leave my Peace Corps service out, but when it's, you know, almost 30 years ago, right? I mean, it, it's a, it, wait, 94. <laughs> It's, 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 it's a long time ago already. Right. So there's not really a place to have it in my regular, like, I can't go back that far because it would just make me look to a old and it just, you know, so I have sometimes taken that and had it in a different like category where it's like international service end or something. And I've had just, you know, the, the kind of experience that I had there. Um, but if you, what, what I'm answering here, how many lines it, it's going to depend. I mean, if you have a lot of other stuff and your, your experience was a, a long time ago, you probably are going to have maybe three bullets to it max. I would think maybe four, who knows? I mean, it depends on how much space you have. I'm a big person on spacing. Uh, if you have the, if you, if you're, you've done your resume and it's down to the final, but it's like one and three quarters page long, pages long, we'll expand that, expand the Peace Corps a little bit more and or some of the other ones to fill that second page because I'm not a lover of a one and a half page resume because to me, it doesn't leave me, the resume reviewer, the option of saying, well, wow, this candidate, he's really great. I wonder if he also has fill in the blank. Well, no, duh, he would have put it, he had blank space. So that blank space on the resume screams, there's nothing else about me that sets me apart, that makes me special or qualified. And I just know that's not the case. So I generally recommend people either fill it to the full two pages, you know, right, or reduce it to the one page. And, and um, so I, yeah, I, I think it just depends. Now, it, it also depends on, you know, the kinds of stuff that you did there. I mean, pull out the quantifiable things, you know, and make it so you have the achievements, you know, in there, you know, achieved an X percent reduction in child nutrition among blah, 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 whatever, in the school that you worked at or whatever it was um, by doing X, Y, Z. So, you know, having, you know, I like bullets better than, than sentences. I, I don't think there's a magic number of bullets, but you, I generally, you know, would say all things equal, maybe try to keep it more, you know, to maybe five or under, but that said, there might be, and you might have two roles. When I was in Peace Corps, I was two years as a rural health extensionist. And then I was a year as a volunteer, um, national volunteer coordinator in the, in the um, you know, headquarters uh, in the capital. 
and very different experiences, right? So I had my comprehensive Peace Corps to show the, the longevity, right? To show the three years because I was worried that people would see the one year and they'd say, oh, did she leave early? The truth of the matter is most people don't know how long Peace Corps is. I mean, other RPCBs do, but they, they also know there's extenuating circumstances. And certainly now with the evacuation, everyone you know, knows, it seems, um, you know, that you had to be brought back earlier than you, you know, wanted to. So um, you can definitely, I mean, you can, you can structure it. You know, I, I put the two, so I had, and that allowed me to have more bullets. And that's when I had more space that was able to be allotted for that one. But now I, I would never be able to get away with putting, a, you know, a lot of space because it's just so far back. But fortunately I have recent Peace Corps experience both in headquarters and here, so I can cling to that. Um, a question from Catherine just about accessing past uh, webinars and specifically uh, yesterday's webinar on yep. career change. Yep, that one is going out. Um, it's going to go out tonight or tomorrow morning. I'm, I'm waiting for the uh, recording to be uploaded. Our, our uh, staff person who handles that has been out the last couple days. So um, we will, and this one will get up as soon as well. It'll, I, would, I would allow, you know, maybe, you know, two more days and, and see if you still don't get it, get a hold of me. But I, I'm, I'm definitely committed to getting that up and um, to share to folks, so. A question, uh, when trying to change careers into a, into a different field, what phrasing, oops, gotta, hold, hold on, got a new question. <laughs> what, um, what phrasing could we use for a brand statement if we don't have experience in the new field? For instance, could we say an aspiring XYZ? Yeah, I think that would depend on the context that you're, you're using it in. I would definitely say the aspiring would be something you could use when you're doing your networking, your, your like informational interviews, or like I like to say career chats. Uh, because you're wanting to get information from other people on their experience. You're wanting to pivot and utilize, but, but when you're talking about it, make sure that you, you emphasize the skills and particularly the transferable skills and skills that are really needed to do well in that company so that it's not you just randomly thinking you're going to go into another field, like, you know, show that your, your, your commitment, you know, at this point, I'm, you know, I've really enjoyed my, you know, two years of experience in whatever it is, finance, da, 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 da. And at this point, I'm looking to pivot to my passion area of blah, 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 and bring my skills and experience there while learning quickly as a proven, you know, very quick learner, or, you know, quick start, you know, learner, you can also, you know, emphasize that, that you're a very quick uh, study. Okay, um, let's see what we got here. Okay, next one, um, about Wordle. Um, again, are you saying we can load our resume on there to see keyword strength in a cloud? Or are you saying put the vacancy on there to see the important words? You can do both. Now, what I usually use it for is to put the vacancy in there to see what are the key skills and words that they're looking to you know, that they're emphasizing are, but you, there's no reason why you couldn't drop your resume to see how much it's coming out with those kinds of things already, which might not be a bad idea. I've not generally done that, but it, it could certainly be done. Um, one recommendation, if you're ever looking at a federal job, don't just put the entire, the link to the USA job, whatever, because it will not get you anything because there's, you know, there's so much jumble language and just meaningless kind of stuff in it and I, nothing against federal employment but the the, the job you know just it's just not very good so what i would recommend you do instead before you drop it in there is just take the like job description itself the requirements itself and and put those into a word document all together and then just load that in and and see what comes up that'll that'll give you a much more accurate um you know viewing of that so uh, I, I see that there's one um, from, and I, I can't see who it's from right now, but how might RPCV, uh, RPCVs who served more than the standard 27 months um, or also serve as a Peace Corps response effectively capitalize on their experience? That's a great question. Um, and you can do it quite easily. I think, I think um, one of the bullets that you want to put in your standard, like close to the end of your standard Peace Corps experience or, or, or as the first bullet of your third year extension, if you did, for example, um, you could put, you know, selected to serve as 
you know, what a national volunteer coordinator based on proven performance and whatever, like just getting, you know, like that you were chosen for this extra role, I think is good. Uh, and then, yeah, just, I mean, just having it. And then if it was Peace Corps response later, you said, right, um, you might, um, I mean, that's multiple. I think when you're talking about your Peace Corps service, you know, I, you know, I first served in, in Peace Corps for three years, you know, two years, da, 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 doing this. And then was granted a, you know, I mean, that's a competitive program. I know, you know, a competitive slot, you know, or, or um, position working in XYZ. And so it's a kind of that continuation, you know, and you could actually have that be part of your story in terms of, you know, I, I so enjoyed my Peace Corps service and found it so rewarding and da, 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 that I, at the end of it or before it ended, I knew that I wasn't ready to, to leave. And that's why I applied for a competitive Peace Corps response position in da, 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 and was granted the opportunity to take my skill set, go into, you know, wherever and work for an additional year. That's just one example. So the next question I answered already, I think in the full recording of tonight's uh, program will be available. Yes. It may take a few days before yes. it's uh, prepared and ready to be distributed. But Jody, I, most people probably know, but do you want to just explain if people want to copy the chat? Um, how they yes, that, that's good. Um, thank you for the reminder. If you go to the chat um, box and you go to the bottom right, you know, where it has the three dots, the box, click on that and the first choice will say save chat. I recommend that you save it because there, but just one moment, I'm putting in the email from, um, <laughs> for um, careers at peacecorpsconnect.org is um, gonna be added in there in just a second piece. There we go. And that way you'll have that if you have follow-up questions as well. Um, and again, as, as, um, as Jonathan had said, please let your, your friends, your colleagues, you know, other, you know, people from, you know, your country, from other countries that you've met, uh, know about the kinds of services that we have. We really want to reach as many people as possible with these. Uh, so, you know, the, the more the merrier, if you will, when we're on, especially in the Zoom and Sunday, we'll, you know, hopefully be able to do some in person and maybe even come around the country sometimes. So, um, if there are not any, are there any additional, I just looked at my watch and I see that it's just after nine. So, um, we kept it just about to an hour. So, um, that is, um, that's great. I appreciate it. If, if nobody else does have any questions, Jonathan, were there any more in there that I missed perhaps? And if not, we'll go ahead and we'll, um, end the recording and, you know, thank you, you know, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And, uh, you can certainly reach out to us, uh, if you have the additional questions. Okay. Thank you, or want to chat with me, um, that's fine. Uh, the rest of you are free to go and have a wonderful evening. And tomorrow, just FYI, we are doing a NCE, one on non-competitive eligibility. Um, and that one has a um, pretty good uh, registration rate already. And then I'll be repeating it once next week and there'll be some additional ones to you coming, okay?